this first form. Well, yeah, I think that's true. But I mean, intuitively, imagine you came into a store and they were charging different prices for your favorite credit card. How, what would you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, I think that a lot of people think it's unfair if stores charge more if you use a credit card or less if you don't use a credit card or something like that, right? Um, and so a lot of merchants accept credit cards not because they want to do it, but because they're afraid or don't surcharge for credit cards because they don't want to alienate the consumers, even though most stores pay a big surcharge if, the, if you use the credit card. So they'd much rather that you don't use the credit card, but they don't want to charge you for that because they don't want to alienate the consumers. And in fact, there are some legal restrictions that actually make that illegal because it's so unpopular. Um, an, another issue is haggling. Why can't haggling in a market, SMR, be used to like, achieve the perfect price discrimination? Yeah, so I mean, that's a little bit like so arbitrage, but, but imagine, what, what is it that makes a good haggler? Like, why can't, you know, why can't bad hagglers do well? What, you know, what is the, what, why is it hard, so hard to be a good haggler? Does, it, does anyone have an idea? Yeah, go ahead. Like, um, be, like, if you know the word, like, the price of the product, yeah. you know, you don't want to offer less than what it is, yeah. what it costs. Um, but if you don't offer less, they're not going to reduce the price at all. Like, if you don't offer the person, like, half of the price of what they're actually asking for, um, they're not going to reduce the price because they know you know the price of the product and you're willing to pay more. Yeah. D does anyone else want to elaborate on that, or? <coughs> I mean, there's like a range, right? Yeah. There's like a range of, between the cost of the producer and the, the value to the consumer. Yeah. And a good haggler can like, get to the top of that range. But since you don't actually know what that is off the bat. Yeah, so I think a good, the nature of a good haggler is similar as like a good poker player, right? There's someone who can read what other people are thinking and sort of like knows how, where they're willing to go, right? And the problem is almost no one's a perfect haggler. Almost no one can perfectly read another person's mind, right? So that's, that's the problem with getting efficiency through haggling, is that people just don't really know what the other person's willing to pay. So I don't know if anyone's ever had this experience with like taxis in a developing country, where you go and you know, the, ta your, the taxi driver says, oh, you know, 10 soles to go there, right? This is in Lima. And then you say, oh, that's crap. You know, it, it only costs me four soles usually. And then they'll say, you know, oh, whatever. And then about half the time, the taxi driver will just get pissed off at you and just drive <laughs> off, right? And then you have to wait for the next taxi driver to come along, and you'll bargain with him, and you'll sort of get a sense of, well, what are they probably willing to do? And so the problem is that you just don't know. As long as there's some uncertainty about how much that guy's willing to accept and how much you're willing to pay, often the bargaining breaks down, so it doesn't work out perfectly efficient, right? even face-to-face. -face. Okay, so um, uh, in practice, price discrimination, because it's so hard to do perfect price discrimination, is much less perfect. And one way that companies do this is, called, is through what's called nonlinear pricing or nonlinear tariffs. That is, they charge different prices if you buy different numbers of units. So one common way to do this is to just have like a large package be cheaper per unit than a small package is. Um, and Kenneth, wh what are some examples of, of this type of pricing that you can think of just in practice? <coughs> like Starbucks and But is that based on quantity? Or maybe like a restaurant? Like well, actually, so what were we thinking in terms of airlines? That, that's <coughs> not a bad example, actually. Like maybe the, they're going to charge you depending on how much you consume and you consume like a lot of the services. So, 
Well, you get points, right? Yeah, yeah so that's a good example. Ted, Ted, just going to bring up frequent flyer miles. Yeah, frequent flyer miles. That's exactly, I think that's sort of what Kenneth was getting at. Yeah, so that's definitely a good example. Um, uh, another thing is like Costco, right? So they like, you, they chart, you can go to Costco and you can get like a ton of stuff for really cheap there. Whereas like if you buy it at CVS, it's really expensive, right? Another example is like punch cards for consumers being loyal to a store, right? Like I don't know if anyone goes to Third World Cafe, but I think they have like punch cards, right? And if you get enough coffees there, then you get one for free. Um, New York Times does the opposite. You can get the first 20 articles for free, but then you have to pay for after that, right? Uh, or I don't know if anyone uses Sugar Sink or um, or like Dropbox, but like they give you the first certain number of gigabytes for free, and then you have to pay after that in like an increasing rate, basically. Um, income taxes are another example of this, right? If you earn a low amount of income, you pay a low tax rate. But then as you get to higher income, you pay a higher marginal tax rate. Yeah, all these tariffs. When I think of tariffs, I think of like international trade. No, that's not, that, that's, that's just, tariff means more generally price. Okay. International trade, that is the most common use of it. But tariff in economics just means some schedule of prices. Um, okay. So the goal of this is to get consumers to self-select, to buy the right amount, which reveals how much they're willing to pay. And... Uh, in some cases, that means charging a lower price to people who buy more, like in the Costco case. Because basically, the people who are willing to like buy a bunch of stuff and make these really big trips and who don't value the convenience are willing to pay less. So you want to charge them a lower price. Or like the people who are willing to keep track of all these stupid punch cards and have their wallet be like full of all these punch cards, like don't value their time and like organization as much as they value getting a free coffee, right? And so you want to charge them lower. Uh, but the people who like value their time more are going to be willing to pay more, so you want to change, charge them more, right? But on the other hand, in the case of, say, the New York Times, people who only want to read a few articles probably aren't willing to pay that much for the New York Times. The people who want to read a lot are willing to pay more, and therefore you want to charge them a higher price. So what you do is all based on which type of people who buy how much are willing to pay how much, right? So um, this is not as effective as if you could literally charge everyone their willingness to pay for everything, because you need to incentivize people not to uh, choose the wrong thing and therefore uh, undermine the scheme. So you don't want to charge too little at Costco, because then everyone will go to Costco and, and it will ruin the whole whole system, right? Yeah, Maria. So do you mean higher price? Do those are the Well. Like the New York Times oh. case, right? If you don't value the New York Times very much and you just want to read one article, they'll give it to you for free. But if you value it a lot, then they're going to try to charge you a higher price. That's because they do it backwards, right? Because they give it to you for a lower price. Initially. Then, yeah. But then most other. Do the universities opposite. So, it, so the point is you could do it either way depending on who is willing to pay more. That's the idea. So here, here's the, the graphical version of that. So imagine that you know one person has. Uh, a demand where they only want a few units, but they value those a ton, right? That's the case of where you want to give a quantity discount. If the other person wants a lot, but isn't willing to pay very much for it, right? That's the case when you want to give a quantity discount and do Costco strategy. On the other hand, imagine that there's one person who wants to buy a lot and values it a lot more. And there's another person who's not willing to buy very much and doesn't value those very much. That's like the New York Times case. So in this case, you're going to want to charge a low price to these guys and a high price to these guys. And so depending on what the different demand curves look like, that will determine whether you want to have a quantity discount or a surcharge for quantity. <coughs> okay. So um, this can happen not just by offering different quantities, by, but by offering different quality goods. Um, and this is a strategy that we uh, see very often um, Elaine, uh, can you, um, do you have some examples of times when like companies offer, you know, similar products but of different qualities in order to try to charge like the people who are willing to pay more and more? Um, well, airlines that have first class, coach, business class, and I think that's a good example. Yeah, that's a, that's a perfect example. So classes of services in airlines or other transportation, 
the quality of the rooms at a hotel. They usually have like the you know presidential suite, the you know junior suite, etc. Um, American Express cards. You know, there's all different levels of being an American Express card holder, and they almost line up with another example, which is like all the Johnny Walker labels, right? <laughs> Johnny Walker has like all these different labels and their different quality levels, right? Uh, Tiers of cable and internet service is another example. You can buy like more faster internet, less fast internet, different numbers of channel. Um, and a lot of people have observed that in fact the quality that's sold to people who, uh, yeah, go ahead. You could consider those as different products. Sure, but they're, they're, they're similar products with different quality levels, right? And, I mean, you could think of them as being different products, but we haven't yet studied a firm that sells multiple products. So in, sense, in some sense, you can think of any firm that sells a lot of different products, in some sense, as, being, as long as they're close substitutes for one another, as to be doing sort of quality-based discrimination. So um, one of the most common observations in, in this sort of thing is that it often feels like the quality at the low end of the spectrum is like not just... Uh, uh, you know, not as high at the high end, but like deliberately and maliciously made worse in order to avoid the people who are willing to pay more trying to, you know, go economy. So like they deliberately make it uncomfortable and are rude to you in economy because they don't <laughs> want the rich people to try to fly economy, right? And this was actually famously observed in the 19th century by Jules Dupuis, who is sort of the founder of a lot of modern economics. And he said that in like the railroad cars, what they used to do is like put no roof over the cars, even in Russia, like going through Siberia, like uh, because they wanted everyone to be really cold in third class, even though it cost them like almost nothing to put the roof on it, because they didn't want the first class people to be tempted to take third class, right? Uh, <laughs> And uh, I think a lot of us, when we fly coach, have an experience like that. It's like, it's like, oh, you missed your flight? Like, screw you. You know, go figure it out yourself. Whereas if you fly first class, it's like, oh, sorry. We'll just, you know, book you in on the first flight we can possibly find, right? Um, so that means that a monopolist has an incentive to distort not just how many people are consuming, but to re reduce the amount of quality that's provided particularly for people who are buying the cheapo product, right? Um, and what we're going to return to a lot of these issues in lecture 14. So uh, one, so to think graphically about the, what you do in terms of quality, imagine you're trying to figure out how much quality to give to the low uh, quality person, right? Well, you're going to offer two products, like a first class and a regular class. And imagine that the high quality person is willing to pay this much for, as a function of the quality, and the low quality person is willing to pay this much as a function of quality, right? Now, if I start increasing the quality of the low quality good, what's that going to do? Well, that's going to reduce the amount that I'm going to be able to charge to the high quality person by the amount that they're willing to pay for, for that the, uh, dip increase in quality, right? Because I'm only going to be able to charge them uh, the amount that they value the additional quality that they get, right? So if I charge, if I, if the low quality product had zero, right, and I offered three as the quality to the high guy, I could get his full triangle, but then I wouldn't be able to charge anything to the low quality people, right? Because they wouldn't be offered any good. Now imagine that I have a 0.5 quality for the low quality guys, right? Well, then I'm able to charge them this amount over here, but the amount that I'm able to charge the high quality guys is reduced by that amount over there because they could always pretend to be the low quality guys. Right? So it's reduced by the difference between how much the high quality guys are willing to pay and how much the low quality guys are willing to pay. Right? Because now they have the option of choosing this, so they're never going to pay me their extra willingness to pay. Right? So what you do is to determine the quality to charge the low quality guys is you walk along here till the point where the area between the high quality and the low quality guys willingness to pay and the area between the low quality guys willingness to pay and zero are equal. So you kind of go along here to this point.